Okay, recording meeting of the OSC developer team on Tuesday, October 24. Big deal is getting ready for the tractor build, which is coming up in a couple of days. Thursday is our training session with hands on skills as well as skills in CAD. We're actually going to teach people CAD to look at all this work. Uh, the tractor work and everything else to, as as we go forward we're going to try to get people on board with all the CAD tools that we're using explaining that to them in, in a simple way we are going to use OSC Linux we're going to boot it up uh, so wh whoever is going to be working on CAD or interested in learning that they're going to use OSC Linux so Christian that's good job there uh, we used it actually last time last time we were uh, in a CNC torch table workshop we took a look at FreeCAD um, so it worked for some people for some people they they just uh, the one thing that gets people is people get, can't get into their boot screen like they don't know how to do it for my computer it actually works automatically I don't even have to go into my boot screen on uh, forget what, which computer it is but for me OSC Linux if, if you have it plugged in it just loads right up so thank yeah, you. Yeah so for me I figured out that problem margin Yeah. it, it has to do with the type of Order you have. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it may be it may be due to the um, iOS, so it, it may be UEFI or or, or um, the standard BIOS. I, I'm not quite sure, but probably you need U, UEFI. Uh, now, I'm is that something possible. resident on the computer itself, or is that something on the ISO itself? That's uh, your, it's on the computer. Uh -huh. that's, that's probably I'll I'll put in a. Um, I may put that into the doc, so maybe we can print that out with the, uh, on a, on a page, and you can just uh, give that around. So this that this shouldn't be an issue. I'll, are you I'll saying? To that. Are you saying people can install a different bootloader on their computer? Oh, uh, I would I would rec recommend that, but it's it's part of the BIOS, so it's part of something that's already installed and that's basically taking care of everything. The bootloader is already on the ISO, and that that won't tip, uh, cause any trouble. Uh, it you have to, basically. You just uh, have to go in and configure a setting. Like you have to, you have to change. Like there's different bootloaders that you can. There's different bootloaders on your BIOS, uh, and you can go in and change. I forgot which one I had to change it to, but it's like there's a like less secure version. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then it probably you need legacy boot. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah, probably legacy. it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put Is that, that into the documentation. Uh, and, okay. Um, so, so you maybe have just to print out a page and you can put it onto the workshop and okay. then everybody gets it working, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, if you could do that. So I think there is, the thing is that there's two different boot screens. One is the boot screen, like the select startup device screen, and then there's another, it seems like there's two types of different startup screens, right, or no? Exactly, that's right, the, uh, right. the one, uh, the, yeah. the first one that's coming, that's basically from your computer, that's basically a little chip on your main board, not mm -hmm. the processor, but before that, and that one is saying what should happen next, for yeah. example, should I go to the hard drive or to the USB, Yeah. and uh, this one has to be configured correctly, of course, because okay. otherwise it won't go to the USB stick, and that's the, the thing that's probably not working, so um, I'll put that one into the documentation, I'll try to put it in in a most universal way so you may yeah. just uh, print it out and uh, just add it somewhere it's visible in the workshop. Yes, please. Can you do, um, um, I guess, put that into a working document? Uh, basically, can you start a, a presentation on that such that I can just print out that one page and we can keep keep taking notes so something that I can print on a single page if can you do a presentation yeah, that's that, that's what I was thinking of. exactly that's okay. what I'll try to do excellent excellent so yeah that, that will solve that that's good we're nailing that we're nailing that down thank you okay so let's let's continue talking about the next steps in line so big event coming up this this Thursday first day is training day and then four days of build the the GPS part actually it's coming along very well there's gonna be two people here from the open robotic system ro it's called ROS robotic operating system that's Matthew Droder and another guy Jeremy and Matthew started RossAgriculture.org, which is robotic operating system agriculture so applications of robotics to agriculture so that's great we're gonna get that thing working uh, 
this time around he's not, he looks like he's gonna stay for a little longer to make sure that everything is working as it should uh, as a result of the build so let's talk about some longer term pr plans just for, just for perspective this is the pretty much the bi biggest workshop of the year it's scheduled don't have anything on a schedule after that though I do want to continue running the 3d printer work um, we don't have one scheduled for November or anything like that so November is empty but in December I'm actually going to be going I'm invited to Costa Rica and Belize uh, so there's some people there so Scott Mader has been a constant contributor he he bought one of our, a couple of our actually brick presses he took one down to Belize and uh, he he lives down in, in Belize and he's got friends in Costa Rica and we're actually going to scope that out as, as a potential workshop for March so talking about building a tractor and a brick press down there which would be a first uh, really a first big international event if that, if that does happen um, so that would be very nice uh, how about uh, OSC South let's talk about that so in the, with respect to longer term plans September I'm going to try to work hard and, and see if we can get our immersion program going by September of 2018. So that means six months of immersion training. It may be three months off-site, three months on-site. Uh, but, but starting with a real, really hardcore immersion deal that the expectation is as a result, you're, you're going to build yourself an open source microfactory. What else? So we, we do have, when we look at all the experience that we do have, we have built a lot of the different machines. Um, torch table, which we have to perfect, CNC, circuit mill, 3D printers. We got some of the heavy duty machines like the iron worker, uh, hole puncher, heavy duty drill press, like all those things we've already prototyped. And we, we want to add a couple of things like, uh, like an open source portable welder, a couple of other things. But I mean, we're pretty much ready to spawn a micro version of a micro factory. Um, with all the products that we have, we'll see how the tractor turns out. But I mean, producing 3D printers, tractors, brick presses, power cubes. I mean, there's significant production capacity right there, and we want to get people trained on that. And especially as the house gets rolled out, we're finishing. We just uh, installed the stove, uh, the hydronic stove. But with all those products, we got to share that with the world and invite people to actually take in an immersion program where the expectation is that you're going to do this for a living because you can set up. A significant operation it would require a lot of commitment from the, the student side as in there would have to be a way that we can fund get land and build the micro factory so there's a significant costs involved outside of learning it because and so for that we want to have pull from the community wherever the person is like I talked to Roberto about this but can we get local supporters where they support you and um, support the student in their local area such that there is significant drive that something really does succeed so it's not just one person going off to the middle of nowhere and trying to start a micro factory there's some resources that are required and involved so we'd have to address that and OSC, OSC's role could be the training marketing I would say actually um, the brand identity and, and trying to roll out a basically an open source franchise how does that look we don't know we'll see um, we'll check out what happens in Costa Rica as far as potential workshop and a potential site for another OSC branch but I'm looking at like if, if things were to go decently well 2019 try to what about um, how about starting a, a branch site uh, 2019 that that could could happen so how, what do we do to get there? We continue developing the HR team, of getting people on the team, continuing the development. Like right now we've got uh, decent development capacity, though our team is, I mean, it's still very small. Uh, so there's the development side, recruiting side, uh, Hero X, the Hero X part. Uh, as soon as this workshop is over, I'm going to work on that and put up the, the open source micro factory challenge where we put up a, uh, a reward for doing some of these designs so we can see that it might be our development team as well as people who are just motivated uh, from the Hero X challenge to contribute to the actual project so that could actually be a way that we're growing the team people find out about the project um, and of course we make it that the techniques that people use in the Hero X would be very open source centric so we're using FreeCAD and so forth and that will be part of the requirements that at the end of the day 
all the content must be open source in a in a deep way. So that's that's a brief overview of what's what's happening. But the bottom line is still it's like uh, having the capacity to recruit developers. Um, for example, one just uh, got contacted by some people who want to develop hemp processing equipment. So that's tractor and some processors and other things uh, for hemp production. So I asked them, okay, well, let's try to get funding where we not necessarily develop the hemp equipment, but develop the capacity to get people to develop, whether it's hemp equipment or whether it's the welder or anything else. We really have to invest in the ability to get people on board. There's a lot of people that could be contributing here that are not, and we want to work on that. So without, uh, that's enough for the long-term vision. So continuing, uh, let's see, do we have Lex? No, no Lex here, but there's a few people like Matt Droder and a couple others that are contributing. They're not officially on a team, but it will be good also to log their hours. So Lex, if you are seeing this, if you can open source the actual site where we can create new timesheets, I think only admins, I think you and I who are admins on that can do it. But it would be nice actually if uh, you know somebody joins the team and we can send them to the, uh, to the osedev.org and say, okay, start logging so we don't have to carry that burden of having to set that up. They could set it up and then embed it in their log. So it's just distributing the tasks that it's simply enough to, s <clears throat> if it were simply enough to set up the timesheet keeping app, which we all have embedded in our teams, uh, in our work logs, uh, that would be very useful uh, specifically for that purpose, not on a full-time people who, who are on the OSC dev team, but just for certain ad hoc contributors who are serious ad hoc contributors like Matt Droder who's working on the, the GPS tractor for example who's, he's not officially on a team but he's gonna do that for this project and and um, he may or may not may not join the the dev team but we're missing the logging of their hours next item so let's go through what we have so far uh, we're moving right along so so if you guys haven't seen the let's see the micro track latest updates is it's we made a few changes um, we're gonna migrate to this faster motor let's see the let me open it up in LT master CAD no MT master CAD we're very very well designed on the micro track the life track is pretty much a generic design it's it doesn't have a lot of the details filled in but we will do both during the workshop uh, we've got about 14 people that are attending. Let me boot this up. Roberto, any um, did you get a chance to do the update since since uh, I checked last night? Um, that's the version of the file I have right now. I uploaded a new version today. Okay, so the so let me just uh, download that right now. Yeah, so it's it's pretty sweet. We're um, trying to pack more action into that platform to basically if you want to do 32 horsepower that's uh, MT MasterCAD let's do MT MasterCAD yes yeah, so Roberto's working on a part library he's doing a lot of good uploads there um, okay as that downloads here uh, let's see updates on the robotic tractor we, we're continuing the meetings Tonight we have our next meeting in series. Uh, we've been meeting for the last two weeks. So that's continuing. What you see here is the actual simulation. So it's very cool. One of the guys there put this micro track into the simulation. It's called Gazebo. It's an open source package. But he's putting in all the like the inertial properties, the hardware properties of that thing, so that when you impose code for the GPS control, you can actually simulate it in this package called Gazebo. So that's looking pretty impressive I mean that's that's pretty state-of-art stuff we're simulating what the actual code the control code the GPS control code would do on a real earth terrain you could even see that the the drying cr cracked ground here it's this is good okay um, back to so let's see let's go to the micro track as it boots up but let's let's see um, Josh uh, maybe we can fill in on the, where we are in the no look at that that's pretty cool um, yeah, so this is a vibratory plow. We're going to aim to build that during this 
this build. And what it is is, uh, it's, so you got your shank and you have, this is basically for burying cable, like 12 inches or so. It vibrates and it's a, it's a plow so you can insert a cable like, like a power line under the ground. And we have the motor with an eccentric, yeah look at that, I mean that's pretty sweet here. We've got this PTO motor um, right here with an eccentric weight uh, between, between it. Josh, any, any comments there? Yeah, so um, compared to the last week, I just kind of broke it more into components and yeah. kind of said, all right, let's try to make this as simple as possible so we can get right. something like working. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I kind of I did a little bit more research and I found out there's these things that they call them like subsoilers. And so they've got yep. kind of this kind of shape where um, instead of, you know, feeding the, the tube in from the top kind of above the, the shaker assembly you actually end up with um you just have a hook down at the bottom of the the shank um kind of on the opposite side of the the shank from the tractor and you just actually you know attach your pipe to that yeah and so it just as it's digging in it just pulls it through as opposed to trying to feed it through which is another style but i just thought seems a lot more complicated and difficult than uh you know it's just an extra component we've got to do a you know, bend in our pipe and stuff, and it just, it was a little bit more work than I thought we might have for now, so I was just trying to make it as simple as possible, and I still think we could have a, a module like that, I mean, we could change out the shake and have mm -hmm. the, um, the geometry change the bed, so that then we have a way to feed the tube in or something, but, um, and then, you know, the goal here is maybe we don't get this shaker assembly working, well, let's just try it with pressing it into the ground, you know, and this would be a way to maybe make that work so yeah. okay yeah make the shank here I'm, I'm looking at some of the details uh, the shank should be one one inch make the shank one inch thick cool. it looks like you got thin pretty thin uh, looks like the plates you have <clears throat> like the thing that's the motor is mounted to I would make that all half inch plates uh, except for the one that's on the motor itself because we're kind of like running out of space there um, all the, I would say close it. That is half inch plate. The, that is? The, yeah, the, like the eccentric weight, that, all that's half inch oh, okay. thick. So, oh, okay. Yeah. And the shank I'll, I can make thicker. Okay. Yeah, and make it, can you make it that the eccentric is, can we get the eccentric just a little wider? And yeah. less, we want to close that so nobody gets hurt on that. So. Like maybe put a guard on top and bottom, but I think the sh the the weight can be smaller in terms of diameter. Um, seems like it can, but we can play with that. So that's that's a five supposedly five pound weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just what I was doing based on laying on like standard density of steel. Um, yeah. So you know, yeah, we could make it smaller and thicker um, because that that yeah. uh, spline. Um, you know, weld on stud spine. Yeah. Um, uh, that is, I think, you know, an inch and a half thick or something. So, right. or at least, you know, yeah, inch and an eighth. So there. we could make it an inch thick versus yep. half inch or something. So yeah. That would allow yeah. us to make it a little bit more compact. Yep. Uh, yep. Sounds good. So let's continue on that. So, uh, are you going to add the, the pipe laying pipe to that? Is that next step or yeah that, I think that'd be next step and so that'd okay. be you know something we can keep there and that to be like a piece of conduit that has you know a bend in it or something so yeah yeah okay yeah yeah that's that's pretty good so yeah we can try this and we've got uh, so I got a couple of these female quick attaches and then so we have one that we can use for this we've got the motor and the bearings so yeah we could build that out let's just see what what else we can do on some of the other details on it okay yeah. um great so this is moving on to the master cat of the tractor look at it it's, uh, it's a lot of little adjustments here and there but we moved the so so check this out the motors are different now i found these other motors they're actually going to get you faster speed and are pretty good they're they're very compact too 
And yeah. Watching it. I, I don't think you're sharing your screen at the moment. Okay. No. Just a heads up. Thank you. Let me do that here. All right. So, yeah, looking at the micro track here, this is good. So, taking the look at this. We're using these other style of motors. They're still quite strong, not as strong as before, but very compact. So, you can put the motor actually on the side because it's very flattish. And uh, let's see, drivetrain. That's the drivetrain. Hiding the track. Look at it. Look at what's under the track. This is great. So that way, the tensioner, so let's hide the second power cube. That's pretty cool here. So look at that. And the tensioner is the thing that moves up and down these arms. And that, I think that's a great design. I mean, we can uh, both mount the motors and tension them at the same time in a pretty compact way using the, the shaft of the loader arms. So it's, I think that's pretty pretty simple as far as the design just one one inch threaded rod that's with this nut down here that nut there is what will move the the whole wheel wheel motor assembly up to tension the tracks I mean that's great and this motor happens to be so compact that it can actually fit on the side now only trick is you see our little fittings there <clears throat> on the top you gonna make have to make sure that they fit, and when you put it, put the tracks back on it. If we try to see where the fittings are, it's 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 getting a little tight there now. So, um, well, what we can do is uh, so if you remove the tracks here, uh, yeah, we're, you know, we got those fittings that have to go under there that's going to be tricky uh, I think moving them facing backwards and then uh, so they're under the tracks in a better way and and there's a little bit of space there can we fit them there I think we can there's this um, yeah the space if the fittings are now on this side here yeah we're gonna have to make it fit it's it's tight but we're gonna have to make it fit and uh, the other op option is also f possibly facing the fittings down so they're even further away from the track unit uh, so that's going to be i can tell you right now that might be challenging we'll have to figure that out as we actually build it it's it's going to be a little hard to uh in a cad here because those fittings are pretty small like they go in there they screw in you don't know exactly how far they're going to screw in it until after you actually have all the parts very specifically um, but the only thing I can ask from this design right now Roberto is where you have this mount plate um, you see the bolt holes right there what you want is this mount plate in order for the fittings to make sure that they're gonna be not hitting this see that mount plate this front face of this mount plate there cannot be above the dimensions of the motor can we do that can we squeeze that around such that this protrusion here yeah this is this could be critical here this part right here um, we want to try to make it as close to this face as possible so it, if we put the fittings to the side or to the bottom yeah like especially the bottom if you were to put the fittings at the bottom, the only way they could go is down. Uh, I, we cannot make a bend here because it would go into this this plate. Um, does that make sense? And is it uh, possible yeah. to do? We can shrink down this this holding box a little bit, right? This this part here. Um, or is it really tight around the body of the motor already? Yeah, the motor is in, co in contact with the vertical. Oh, it's in vertical. contact? Okay. Um, if that is the case, um, only thing I can suggest is, yeah, because uh, what about on the bottom too? Is it? Do you have any space on the bottom? 
you can probably trim it down on the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Definitely trim down the bottom. Uh, and the sides, if we cannot trim it down, that we might have to live with it. The worst case is uh, if there's a conflict and we need to put those fittings towards the back and make a bend, we can just grind this down and, and make room for the fittings. But yeah, it's it's uh, I can tell you right there that's we're we're getting this really nice and compact here, um, and we're working with, like right under the tracks. That's going to be uh, might be a challenging. Hopefully, it's it's really easy. I could see, for example, if the fittings are facing down, there's definite, definite, you know, you know, definite space there. But once again, the ho the hoses have a certain bend radius, so you want to make sure we can fit this all. So I got both straight and angled fittings in order to make it fit, and we'll we'll make it work somehow. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's really good. So this, I think, the tensioner here is really nice and compact, very simple. It's very accessible as far as the bolt uh, to tension it. You screw the threaded rod into the, this top nut, and then you put this second nut to lock it, and then you do the tensioning with this third nut. It's all good. And, yep. Are the existing motors that are going to be reused, they have to be reworked to meet the, the CAD now? Is that kind of the, they're going to have to kind of, those to match right well here we have the new motor so that's already done but the other motors the former design is still good there's nothing wrong with that those are so the idea here is uh, here's the design rationale I wanted to make the the micro track faster the max speed we could get on the big motors would be three miles per hour and that's if you have their series in parallel drive where you either in parallel you're dividing the fluid into the one side and the other side and in, in series drive you're going from one side and then to the other side uh, if you do that you cannot turn in series you can turn in parallel we have a system the if you look at the uh, look at my log and look at the the micro track page there's documents on the the valving system the valving system allows us for both parallel and series control in if we use the large motors on the micro track the max is three miles per hour on series okay so we wanted to make this a little faster this industry standard is 4.1 miles per hour for the Toro Dingo and in this system here we have 4.5 miles per hour in parallel and nine miles per hour in series so we really this thing can fly nine miles per hour is pretty fast so right now we can go up to nine miles per hour in series. That's good for travel. It's not good for work. I mean, that's if you want to move the machine, you know, from you know a mile down the road, you can do that easily. Um, but yeah, and these motors are so compact, it's nice. It's but we're going to use the big ones for the the big tractor. For here, the big motors are overkill. For for here, the small motors here that we have, which still have six thousand inch pounds, that's still very significant. That means we're going to have two thousand five hundred pounds of drive force on this little little tractor, which is very good, mm. as opposed to seven thousand, which is overkill. But we're going to have seven thousand on the micro, the the big tractor. So using the big motors on a big tractor, we we go go back to our normal seven thousand pounds from two motors in parallel. So that's that's the idea there. Uh, we have the the big 45.6 cubic inch motor that stays as is here these are 15.9 cubic inch uh, as far as the volume of their internals yeah so that's that's that uh, Abe does that answer all the questions there yes I think so so these are yeah. a new uh, completely new compact and the existing motors get reused on the yep. larger tractor design. yep so what you're seeing here is instead of using the I mean, we could have gone with the same motors to reduce part count drastically. Well, not drastically, it's just not using different motors. Like, I do like the idea you have this construction set and then you have a finite number of parts. You're not spawning out into all kinds of, you know, hundreds, hundreds of different parts for everything. That's what we're trying to get away from in the Global Village construction set. We're trying to say, what's the minimum set that can do everything? Well, here, uh, we went away from that rule a little bit. We could use the larger motors at slower speed but I think to have this this better functionality in terms of speed 
that's that's good and and this means uh, I mean this machine right here is I think the design that we have we'll see what the results are in the real build but I mean it's really good I mean it's super compact uh, I think well designed here I mean we've got the Bobcat quick attach right speed power is 32 horsepower Toro Dingo only has like 25 horsepower or something like that so we got more power uh, more speed lower cost it's pretty good we can I mean if this really works out well I'd love to run workshops like this everywhere I mean this is a really I think pretty decent product so we'll see we'll see what uh, what happens I mean this could be I mean possibly this is a killer app right here uh, especially with the GPS and the re remote control where we're getting our hands on the remote control GPS I mean that's that's a pretty elite function uh, that's that's expensive in the marketplace um, if we could open source that that's a lot of good for the world so yeah uh, what are the outstanding steps here I think I don't know this is it uh, outside of shortening those little pl th those plates where if we can a little bit um, and probably from the get-go I would say let's start with the fittings pointing back yeah I mean we don't have to worry about it. we'll do it in practice just leave that don't worry about fixing that but definitely trim up the little bit here and and the structure here this whole idler that's a welded assembly there is um, basically this this pipe uh, kind of pipe section here will which will straddle, straddle the four inch pipe uh, four inch tube here that's all welded just cut and welded uh, we can cut all these flats off on the iron worker machine we can construct this pretty much from flats half inch flats cut them to, to, to the right size <clears throat> and then weld them together so that's doable and a good thing about the tra big tractor is that we can use the once again it's the same mechanism same kind of tensioning mechanism as on a big tractor uh, some of the big features of the build are going to be um, as far as fabrication challenges it's getting the geometry of the, the arms uh, cutting those out we're not we don't have CNC right now so we're gonna cut it by hand and that's okay that's we're gonna I think what we can do is print it uh, print it on pieces of paper <clears throat> put them together and like trace them onto the metal or something like that or just take measurements and and uh, just trace them on, onto the piece of metal but probably printing I'm gonna see if we can print it from just sheets of paper that would be the most secure way and then we can transfer that to the metal yeah um, that's good that's good what else to be said I mean look at the Bobcat quick attach we had uh, so Roberto Roberto he widened out he made this the standard Bobcat quick attach um, other than that oh okay one detail here we got those pieces off the shelf so Roberto actually this that piece here uh, we're not gonna have that we're just gonna use the one that's off the shelf that assembly off the shelf so it's gonna cut off there which is fine that's all right it'll just mount um, like the the mount itself no the 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 male part that piece won't bend. so maybe, maybe if we can change that actually too the this is cut off that piece right there is not there uh, that section of the piece is not there it ends right where you have the, the mount for the arm but yeah if 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 we cut this that that part of the ML plate yeah how how are you going to 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 fit uh, to fit the the female plate in the in the you sides? mean so it doesn't move side to side yeah that, that's the the well, function of the right of the it is plate. Now also what happens is because of these pins, you're not going to be able to move side to side either. These pins lock it in place. Does that answer it? Yeah, but that, that's the bottom, the bottom of the, the plate. But what about the... Uh, the, the well, because... The bow? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Yeah. There is room for torsion on this. Yes, if you don't have this all the way to the end you will be moving the top just a little bit but the bottom will lock it in place so it won't move all the way typically if that happens not when you're moving straight forward and back 
if you're just digging straight forward and back, you're not going to move the bucket. But if you are turning and digging at the same time, you're going to put a lot of force on that part, in which case what you're saying is correct. So, But to do what we have here, we'd have to weld an additional part onto the, the, the quick attach. So if you look at, so Amazon, no, let's, let's look at, yeah, let's, if we go to Amazon, let's take a look at the actual part. Bobcat quick attach because I got these right off Amazon right here so these ones so you see they end so we, we'd have to for you for us to do what you're saying we'd have to weld additional piece to it um, not sure it's worth doing that well we can do it but for initial just to test it I mean let's see What's the advantage of having this go out all the way? Well, this is the is that this length, the width right there is that that's forty two inches, right? Or forty forty two, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah so. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm well, but also but notice that the, the the outer side is forty forty two. Yeah. The inner side. Is yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Um, it's not a not a huge deal because think about also this way if we can use this Bobcat quick attach that we have already to put on larger implements such as 40 a 46 inch mount bucket or something like that so as long as you're smaller than that you can fit implements that are bigger for implements that side to side motion is critical you want to have that like if, if you can't allow for side to side motion because you have you're doing that a lot uh, yeah, you do want to have that, so we can weld it um, if we want to. Now, yeah, for it to be accurate with the yeah, but for the first, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it. Like once we, once we get in, and we see faults, like it actually is not working well. I would add it, but I would start with uh, without it and see how how it's working. Yeah, yeah, both work, both will work. Well, that's good. Um, yep. Let's see what else. Uh, the cylinders, so I got the cylinders here. There's um, the mounting here. This mounting is a two inch bar right there. We don't need this whole whole thing. We, we can leave it for now, but I mean, I think when we build it, we all we need to do is we need to support this bar up at this correct height. We can get away with like one one piece one section four inch long piece here four inch long piece there we can weld that solidly to that uh, we can use the whole five whole piece or just use like a couple of one whole pieces that's just a comment there uh, other than that let's see the middle bar on this whole thing when I look at it right now the middle bar is not doing much we can actually avoid the middle bar if we want to right because we're not at present we're not really using it for anything what I'm, what we have a lot of here on site is half inch quarter, four inch tubing very heavy stuff we have some of the quarter inch um, I was thinking if we use the half inch material we wouldn't need this middle bar if we're using quarter inch we could use it but it's not even necessary for 2,000 pounds this frame here that's the long frame I think there'll be plenty uh, so yeah, yeah, when I look at this, I mean, this is, we're talking about a machine that's about 2,000 pounds, and, uh, yeah, the middle bar is extra. It's okay, it doesn't hurt anything, I think. You know, we had it before because we were actually mounting the the wheel motors around the second bar. Right now we're not, so it's kind of a somewhat of a legacy piece. Yeah, anyway... No, this is all really good. Let's just discuss the power cube, the, the two power cube mountings, the um, power, power cube. So look at that. Uh, very tiny power cube, no hydraulic tank. That's, that's decent. I mean, look, it fits quite well. Now the question is what happens when the person stands behind it. So let's do that. Um, so what we want to do, like if the person is standing on this without the power, the second power cube, they can we can mount the controls like right on top here if there is the second power cube 
what we might want to do there is put on a little extension so bolt on an extender like a four tube and a little platform here for the operator we can bolt that either yeah we can bolt it through these three holes now be good enough there we'll see how it works in practice like the ergonomics of this when we when we test it we're gonna put the system on together with uh, with the single power cube and then test that and then we'll add the second power cube to it but this is really nice I mean that got to be very compact um, we shortened up the the mount piece a bit Roberto thank you for doing that the pump I can say it probably can be a little shorter here this is uh, I measured what we think we're gonna have is gonna be four inches and what's here is five inches so probably trim can take an inch off of that it doesn't matter for now and the width of the actual power cube what do we get down to 13 yeah 13 inches there so that's very compact and we think we can fit the motor in there with 13 inches right now the way the motor is drawn it's it's more like 10 inches should be actually 13 more like 13 uh, so it'll be right up to the the plate we'll see uh, and we'll fit that all in place make sure that 13 inches is is good enough and that we don't have to uh, yeah we'll, we'll make the frame fit as we as we build it yeah 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 I mean I can't say much more about this that's pretty good I, I think we're pretty complete so the next step on this is to generate some of the um, <clears throat> Roberto maybe if you can generate some of the fab drawings like you wanna have fab drawings for the arms for these plates here right because we're gonna custom make these ones we're gonna make the bucket so we need bucket bucket drawings uh, tooth drawings uh, we're buying the, the actual female parts, so we don't have to have drawings for that. But yeah, this piece right here, yes, uh, where the loader mounts. Um, yeah, we want to have that available fully. The uh, only thing I would ask here is, you see how you have, these are going to be, what, half-inch plates? We can trim this around a little bit, a little close around that hole. We've got, like, over one inch around we can get away with or our best would be three quarter inches around this hole if we can trim that down just a little bit so we only have three quarters inch of the space is yeah, that the problem with that is, is with the with the riser arm uh, it's actually it's, I think it's in the, in the limit for the can you show the, the rice Right at arms. Yeah. Uh, but I'm talking about this piece, um, this piece here. Trim it. I was asking about this piece here, the green. You can you can't trim it. Can't you trim it like three quarters inches away from the hole? It, it's just this little piece here. It's a little just a little excess. Don't need this. Does that make sense or no? Or that's not doable. Well, actually, like okay, look at this. This whole piece we can trim so that this hole. Leave it the vertical height that you have, but this hole here. Um, basically three quarters inch away from the hole would be good if that's half inch plate so right now we have more like what one and a half one ah that's not too much wait is that a three-quarter hole actually the cylinders I got are one inch hole yep yep yeah please expand that to a one inch hole and uh, this bar material make it but stick around only like three quarters inch outside of the hole that's all we need we don't need that much it's just a little excess yeah but those cylinders are, are three quarter three quarters yeah the ones i ended yeah. up getting the bolt yeah i got the same ones are, that like getting you, another cylinders yeah the ones that uh, yeah wherever we got the three quarters they weren't available or they weren't as good so 
Uh, I got ones that ended up being one on each end, which is better, so we don't have to have three quarter pins. We have all one pins, one inch pins. So those, yeah. Um, let me just go go to the work document there. So if you go to my log, uh, just verify that I, I put the cylinders into this master bill of materials, which would be on the that would be under micro track V seventeen ten. There we go, BOM. Um, where are the where are the cylinders here? cylinders are in there and they're not where are those cylinders I have to go to my email I guess I didn't put them in so surplus center order those cylinders anyone see them there time this is nine zero part nine zero five nine I think I got this one right here. Um, these are one inch. Yeah, so this is the one. It's got the same spacing between, which is like 22 and a quarter inch spacing, but the pinholes are one inch on that. And I got a two and a half inch one because the one we did in the CAD was one and a half inch. Um, 2.5 inch is not going to hurt and it's definitely going to improve the force that you get out of it for those we were talking about you did some of the numbers there and you it was something like 500 or 300 pounds at a particular position so this will increase that that would like double it in one of those extreme movement positions so this is what we actually have um, and uh, Roberto I'm pasting that in the in the chat there it is so you can take a look at that exactly but it's the same length everything is the same except the thickness now it's going to be a little bigger which is which is fine mm -hmm. okay I, I put an image an image in the the team okay. the meeting document yeah it will show you the the position of the lo loaded arm Respect the oh. metal we attack we got that plate and that's and what you're just saying. almost together. So uh, let me see that if I see that there. Oh, so you put it all the way out because of the location. Ah I see what you're saying. And you are right about that. Um so you put it all the way out so you don't hit this this thing here? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. But you can still trim on this side, this edge here. You can still trim this farther away piece. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Yeah, because right now, what do you have? What is that distance there? Three? No, wrong. How do I take a look at that distance there? Well, this is to there, it's one inch and you get a little more. Yeah, you can trim it down to so it's three quarters away from that hole. Because what we're going to have there is also we're going to weld in a bushing. Um, yeah, like a little bushing that reinforces that hole a little bit. So it's a detail, but but yeah, we we don't need all that over one inch. Just bring it down to three quarters. So um, yeah, is that all right? Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so it does have to stick all the way out there. That's good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, so you got the clearance right there, which is important. Okay. Yeah. Good. And we're making the arms out of two pieces of metal, and it's nice how the the cylinders are actually on the inside of that. That's sophisticated. No, that's good. That's a nice fit. It kind of serves the double purpose. It pr protects the cylinders. The arms protect the cylinder, and there's a convenient mount point when you allow the space underneath to be open. Yeah. All right. Um, so what else about this? I don't think I can say much more about this. Um, yeah, I mean, this is what to do here I mean we're done except for generating the the CAD drawings the basically fabrication drawings so basically extracting some dimensioned drawings draw, drawing dimensioning workbench um, loader arms bucket plate everything that we're not buying the only thing we're buying is the uh, the male part and the female part of the quick attach everything else we're making um, we also want to have a sprocket CAD for reference. We want to have the the idlers CAD, the pattern for the wheel. We're going to have to make a couple more of those. Uh, what we're doing is we're recycling all the parts that we can from the existing three track devices that we've built. Which means that currently we have enough track for three machines or two machines if one track is longer. So let's move to the, the big tractor. So the big tractor has a track that's about 1.5 times this length. So what basically we can do, we can recycle all our tracks from last time, meaning two years ago, and still uh, have the parts for that. Okay. Let's see, anything else here? So, vibratory plow, we got the ROS, we got this here. Um, does anyone else have any reports to share with the team here? Oliver, Roberto, Josh, Christian, Abe. Um, was wondering. Well, it's not in other. Oh, sorry. Um, go ahead. Want to start, Josh? Yeah, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Uh, Oliver, Lex, and I were. Um, doing a little bit actually Lex is probably the, the most up to date on this but we're looking a little bit more into the idea of an OS coin um, and we are now members on the test net for Uniter um, mm -hmm. yeah the, uh, the idea behind it is, is that uh, it's a cryptocurrency that issues a dividend to verified members of the community um so you get a sort of universal dividend if you know enough people in the network. Um, and you still have your, your blockchain confirming transactions and stuff, and anyone can spend or receive it otherwise. Um, but if you are kind of a, a verified member of the community by other people, um, you know that, that just means you've met someone in person. Or For this case, it's, it's a really small community. It's like 25 people in the test net. Most of them are in France. So... Um, 
it, it, it's it's a cool idea, and I think it'll be something that'll that'll be really fun to develop. So if people are interested in that, uh, you know, we've been talking about that a bit in the Slack channel, and then um, kind of just some other ways. Yeah. Uh, can you put a no. link yeah, to that in the document, in the working document, so we can take a look at that? Uh, what are is there an application like how we can tap that um, immediately, or this is probably more in a multiple-year time scale for developing of this? But yeah, it's something to keep keep our eyes out on. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's just looking at this. I think there's there's an increasing trend of yeah, some it was Dixon was choking. Yeah, and I, these 20 million fast with an easy, easy three in my CO. Um, but I do think there's some utility in, in uh, OSC having a um, some sort of I don't know, token or some yeah, sort yeah, of absolutely. community. Um, it's, even if it's just to kind of issue a, hey, here's thanks for your work, you know, and you can incentivize people to to uh, work a little bit more. Yeah. I think that, that could be a cool method to pair that with, um, you know, you're working on a project, and you can trade that that work that you've put into the community for, you know, maybe you, you don't want to build the micro tractor, but you, you know, put a lot of time into developing the ISO. So, you know, maybe there's an, there's an exchange there that can happen pretty fluidly without, um, you know, if it's a large, large enough community, then, you know, that starts to get pretty difficult to say, oh, yeah, I happen to, like, you know, be willing to build you a tractor, but um, so there's there's a you know very very initial stages of talking about some stuff, but I think it has um, yeah some some cool ideas uh, in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a matter of time before we adapt it, and yeah, it's um, we'll see when that happens. Uh, yeah, please put that link to the conversation on there uh, into the work doc. Yeah. And okay, great, mm -hmm. and. Um, let's talk a little bit about the tractor itself so there's um so we're gonna build this i mean this is such a rough concept here right but it's um it's got minimum product here is that we've got the base platform and the tracks supported by three idlers and then the vertical with the track uh with the the drive motors which are the large ones and we've got four power cubes on the back but this geometry is basic. We can, uh, the things that make it work is if we can mount, like one critical thing is this spacing here is pretty large between the arms, but that has to be, for this to be a workable tractor, we have to make sure that we can mount the front quick attach on it. Uh, right now the spacing is probably too large. What is that spacing? Spacing is 57.35 inches that's too large those arms if the bobcat quick attach standard is to fit on it we would have to bring it in uh, so that's the only change that can happen on this um, so yeah we're, we're obviously we're not going to get all the details worked out here but we can have enough detail that we can actually build a basic frame structure the cab is a basic structure we can put on top of this thing um, so we can we can have teams during the build actually work on the individual modulus. For example, we've got joystick valves that will be used to do the, the multiple power cubes. The main proof of concept here is we're going to have one mother power cube that's got all the outlets to all the other power cubes. So one of them is going to have a hydraulic reservoir and cooler. All the other three are going to be the tiny, the 13 inch ones that just provide the engine and suckle off the main power cube. The main power cube is actually going to have to be on top for the gravity fluid flow to so you can prime all the all the pumps. Uh, the main power cube cannot be on the bottom because the top power cubes will have a hard time with suction. So, but that's some of the considerations. So the only thing I can ask on this is for somebody to actually do the uh, fix the the loader arm spacing. That's number one. The second part is we have 36 inch cylinders and 24 inch cylinders to work with okay those are the ones we got those are ones we used before here if this is a 36 inch cylinder uh, 
this may not fit it with this cylinder might have to be mounted on the back here on this this back back arm here that's one thing but given 36 inch and 24 inch cylinders which is what we have to work with uh, we have to make the geometry work out to attach a quick quick attach on the front and, and as I mentioned the, the spacing is too wide so we need to bring the arms in um, would anyone have time to work on that so Abe you think maybe you can tackle that just see see how far we can get on that um, or Abe and Roberto uh, Roberto you, you're I mean you're pretty good on, on uh, okay we probably need, I think we need to define some of the uh, the a list of things to, to kind of finish up on both these. Uh, mm -hmm. I was trying to find stuff to do. Uh, some of the files uh, I just got uploaded uh, for more ease of editing on the details on the micro track. But on the big tractor, uh, I see a lot of files uploaded, but I, I have a, I made a page for it, but I haven't got around to uh, organizing more of that page and all the files that I think uh, you uploaded. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, Roberto, can you comment on that? Sorry? Yeah, Roberto, can you com comment on what Abe just said? Abe... Did you hear what uh, Abe said? Uh, about the uploading double cut files? I, I, I think I missed the, the last part of... Yeah, what Abe, can you, can you clarify what, what your question is? Abe, you you're still there? We, we can't hear you. Oh, I, I don't really have a question. Um, I think uh, we just need to kind of break down some of the last details to do on both of the tractors uh, so we know specifically what to edit. Uh, right. That way we, we've got... Uh, as many people as we can working on different different parts. So right. Um, I also think it'd be helpful to have. Uh, I know there's a bunch of stuff on the wiki that says uh, stuff about the workshop, its order of operation, building, and but I think that there's also those old parts that are being reused. So maybe if we get a list of of that stuff going and where it's going to be, I'm not sure how much detail there is on the wiki and the documents. Uh, uh, I have to look at some of those. You're saying you, you saw the some of the work on the, on the tractor construction set page. There's the build build instructions. Yeah, those are kind of like rough notes. I'm, I'm working on that. I don't think you have to worry about it. I'm, I'm trying to put together as much... Uh, I have some diagrams of the hydraulics in there. Is that what you were refer referring to? Uh, yeah, some build instructions. Um, yeah. That, that'd be part of it. Um, just whatever, obviously we need to break down the finishing details on the micro track, which I think we're getting close on, but it looks like there's a lot more work on the big tractor, like you were saying too. Yeah, so, I mean, we're not going to finish uh, like all the work on a big tractor, but yeah. Um, so if you look at the notes, the four I there's four items. Um, that we have. The question is who is available to do some of the work here. So, uh, given that, let's see. Yeah. Uh, anyone else on the call available to do any CAD work, or d generating a fabrication drawings from the existing CAD work? Oliver, do you have any any time? Or Josh, you're working on um, vibratory plow implement. Yeah, I mean, I might have some time, like Wednesday evening. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's after I, I got me going to be driving most of the day to get out right. to Missouri. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Time, no, I mean it's it's no. We've got just a little bit left time here. Uh, Oliver, are you available by any chance? To do any of this, or Dixon? Um, I'm 
Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. I think um, I'm not very much into the into the uh, uh, tractor thing. Maybe can I uh, mm -hmm. do another thing? What okay. is maybe better? Okay. Like um, I would be uh, interested in the um, or, uh, in the in the free cat workbench thing where Lex is at the moment in. Because yeah, I want to want to uh, deploy it on my own. Also, maybe yeah. I can better do that. Okay. Uh, uh, tell me, tell me more. FreeCAD Workbench. Are we talking about the 3D printer construction set, or are we, what? Are, what are we talking yes, about? Yes, yes. Right, right. And we haven't. I haven't heard much for actually from Stephen regarding that. But yeah, uh, there's uh, there's some work cut out to be done there. So if you feel more comfortable going with that, that's good. That is an important thing. Yeah, Lex has Lex has made a channel about that on the Slack thing. Okay. And, uh, I think can you put that into the some. yeah? Can you put that into the working document, Lex? The the link to the to the thing there, and we do have. Did you guys see the icons that we just drew up? That Jean Baptiste just drew up for that workbench. Is Lex on a call here? No, no, Lex is not on. Uh, I'm just looking for it. Okay, yeah, Oliver, please paste that. The other thing is, let me uh, show you, Jean-Baptiste has just drawn up the icons. I guess you guys haven't seen it. Let's coordinate here. So... Dixon is saying that he can work, but he doesn't have a, a microphone. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's let's take a look at that. Um, wait. So I'm looking at Jean-Baptiste's log... Okay, okay. He, he just sent that to me a couple of days ago in an email. And we need to basically... Uh, yeah, basically, I mean, we've got a couple of threads going on a workbench. One is generating the icons, two is the work that Stephen has been doing, and then Lex and Oliver. Uh, I haven't checked in with Stephen in a bit of time. He hasn't done an update. Let me see if there's anything to be there on Steven log um, no last log is there is October 8 so not not there um, but let me um, just share the icons with you just just to see it but very attractive uh, very attractive set of icons here for the different modules of the 3d printer construction set so so look at uh, you know starting with concepts, but we actually got product here. As in, look at look at these things. Uh, so you can kind of see them. So frames, axes, connectors, power supply, etc. So yeah, yeah, that's there. Uh, let's see if I can add that to my drive and then uh, just share it. Put a link to it on the page, on the working page here. Uh, so move to just my drive. Um, yeah, let's put it into the D3D folder. Mm -hmm. Let me share that with you all. Okay, so yes, Oliver, definitely. Uh, so you're talking about some Python programming to put that all together? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Python programming, and I want to try to deploy the thing on my free cat, and uh, uh, yeah. I, I've just checking for the links uh, from 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 lexing there's a, mm -hmm. a osc diff workbench um uh, page on the wiki which describes that yeah so yeah so yeah please yeah please yeah please link to that and i'm trying to how do i share this thing here um oh let's see maybe here There 
gonna just yeah here are the icons and uh, I have them on why did this not you know them recent today Okay, so I'm going to add these to the D3D, move to the D3D folder, but yeah, that's, that's, um, D3D folder right here, yeah, okay. So I'm pasting this folder of the actual icons. Let's see, do we have a page on the... Okay, oh, you put it there. Okay. Oh, I see dev workbench. So if I go to the dev workbench, I'm going to put the icons right there. Um, yep. So I'm just adding the icon link. Yeah. Okay. So that's there. Can you guys click on that? Does that work for you or is it am I didn't I share it properly? Because when I click on it, it gets me the uh, Yeah. Can you guys click on it, see if I shared it properly? Off the D3D workbench page. Yeah, let me know if once you once you do access that. Okay, so uh, Dixon possibly can do some. So um, let's divvy it up to what we can. Right, so, yeah, just back, right back to um, the notes on it. So, live track and micro track, the tasks are right there. And uh, if you look at the notes, micro track, there's, there's four tasks. Uh, I think Roberto can do the pinholes, trim the mount of the quick attach, um, trim motor mount. Uh, the generating of the fab drawings is, can somebody do that? Um, Dixon, that would be, if you guys maybe can share on, on generating fab drawings, that would be good. That has to have high coordination. Uh, who's, uh, continue yeah, please. Josh. Josh. Uh-huh. Yeah. What was, uh, what does the fab drawings consist of? Is that using that macro to, to just generate this? No, just plain, plain, um, what's it no it's just the plain functionality of uh what's it called in FreeCAD? you've got the drawing dimensioning export. workbench yeah yeah just exporting okay, just need to be exported to dxf no 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 we don't need that we just need the fab drawings so we can have this in the shop print them out and people can look look at the parts off the drawings um so that's uh drawing dimensioning workbench simply making uh, fab drawings out of that. Now, as far as the the actual, like, if we want to do 
printouts on a piece of paper which are scaled to size so we can trace off of that that's a little harder and it kind of uh, I wouldn't worry about it I, I can do that here in a sense that once you actually print it on your printer you have to have all the printer settings correct as well so there's some trickery there um, that's a little harder but the thing that we can definitely do is take all the parts off microtrack and all the parts but the Bobcat quick attach parts they're they're all getting cut or people have to look at it fabricate them so we want to draw them including track pieces if we have to make more track pieces I think we have enough track pieces already but if we have to make more of them we want to have the fab drawing for them available um, that's what we have yeah we do want to do just basically take the the micro track every single part and generate you know generate fab drawings there's a whole I mean that's a book of you know like 40 to 50 60 parts or so so there could be a lot of people on that and what we want to do on that is coordinate who's doing what so let's let's start a page right here uh, on the next page um, slide and duplicate slide let's put a list of uh, priority list and names to them so we can coordinate so fab drawing coordination let's call it specifically what it is it's called dimensional drawings so basically a breakdown into okay tracks so please put your name next to them tracks loader arms track pieces I mean track pieces these are individual parts that we're doing loader arms um, QA plate cylinder mounts the thing I asked Roberto to change uh, tensioner loader arms are the main thing I mean if you look at uh, if we look at what we have to work with there's the power cube frame which we gotta do um, yeah that has, just has to be done with including all the pieces for the reservoir now this frame this sounds like some kind of language agnostic instructionals for, for fabricating the parts in the workshop that yeah we definitely don't have time for that but we have time for yeah I mean the workshops on Friday starts on Friday I don't see that realistic for Friday uh, but we can definitely have a full set of fabrication drawings which are which are the actual dimensions and everything else and what we do here is between showing people on existing parts that we have and actually explaining to people Tom and I can do that we uh, we can direct people the best we can I mean we have plenty of sample parts like for example the idlers you know we've got those built already so we can have uh, people building more but they need to look, look at okay what's the exact diameter that, that we can read off the actual fabrication drawing so um, so idler um, motor let's see what else what else we got for the main pieces that we want to prioritize uh, so there's bucket, there's teeth on a bucket, uh, what else, the, uh, what do we got, I mean there's the frame, I mean every single piece, frame is, uh, is basically how you, what are all the dimensions of the pieces, so frame, now people can have the FreeCAD model out in the workshop and people can actually look at it, okay that's the, uh, dimensions that's doable but of course it's more convenient if you have a printout uh, sprocket let actually the sprocket is a high priority sprocket loader arms I mean loader arms that's number one so so that's the highest priority item we should label them as numbers loader arms sprocket QA plate cylinder mounts. Tensioner is before that because before we put the loader on, we gotta put the wheels on. Uh, 
Idlers definitely. Bucket is later. Let's call it second tier. Teeth on bucket. Frame is first tier. I mean, frame is number one, really. Frame loader arms. Sprocket tensioner idler. Uh, track pieces. Track pieces are second tier because we've got all those models here already. We've got. We're not sure we're gonna need to make any more. Uh, what else? Are people able to edit the docs so you guys can also continue editing that? There's power cube frame. That's first first tier. Hey Martin, uh, what do you think would be priority? I mean, finishing up some of these changes in power. Do you think it's more important to get some dimensional drawings for the? Uh, on the on the micro track, we're finished. There's minor modifications to be done. There's the pinhole change, the trimming of the quick attach pieces, and trimming of the motor mount. I mean, that's little detail. Um, most of the parts, it's just small changes on a couple of the parts there. Uh, I think oh, Roberto like helping with dimensional drawings or finishing up the laboratory plan. What do you think? Is that um, no, I mean, I would say if we want to build the plow, you got to have the full design of that. So uh, just do that. I think um, the dimensional drawings, what I can see happening as well. No, I would say do the plow because um, what we can do, the first day on Thursday is a training day for everybody. What we can do in the training day is actually have people learn to do the, the dimensional drawings. Those are very simple. All you do is just a basic sequence of instructions for dimensional drawing generation. We can have people in a workshop actually generate, in fact, it would be cool to generate um, the drawings and, and actually start dividing up tasks to the people who are generating the drawings and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, for you, I think that's fine. Uh, but if we have somebody yeah, else... It's a lot more fun, a lot more fun to, to learn on something that actually really matters to you. So um, well... As far as doing the drawings. They'll, they'll be doing something that you know we're yeah. cutting out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we're we're okay on the drawings. The drawings are a simple thing. I mean, we can you know we can go to the drawings are as simple as if you know if we need something we, we have the computer say in a workshop we can pull a dimensional drawing right right up um, if it doesn't exist already. So that's I'm not seeing that's a block. That's a big block right now. Um, what we can say is the micro track is quite good to to build from and. We want to have as m many of the drawings available as possible uh, when we actually cut them out, so we can do that the first day uh, during the training day. We can just spend an hour on that or so. Now the life track. So the life track is the second priority. I want to get somebody on that. Like, like I would say, um, let's have one dedicated person on. I think I think the micro track we're done, and it's now. Roberto as well as generating fab drawings. The part that I'm concerned about is right now we got to work out the spacing on the loader arms for the life track. So uh, if we can dedicate somebody who can put in a few good hours to that, there's three tasks there. So narrow the loader arms, fit a 36 inch cylinder and fit a 24 inch cylinder. Everything else is conceptual but we need that as a technical detail. So I want to ask if uh, Abe, are you going to be in a good position to work on some of that, or the life track part? Yes, I think I can work on the life track stuff. Um, to clarify, yeah. I understand a bunch of these parts for the instructions for the drawings, uh, because the, if I understand correctly, the software isn't quite working on the torch table, and it's no, like, no, we don't have, we're not going to be using that. the torch so table. A bunch of this stuff is going to have to be cut by hand. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, for example, for the tensioner, that's shearing plates on an iron worker and then welding them together. The things that are actually by hand real work is the loader arms uh, for the micro truck. That, you know, we have to draw it out on a piece of metal and then, you know, cut from that exactly as, as, as exactly as we can. So, um, yeah, there's it's it's manual. Yeah. Okay, I guess, and, and you have some existing parts, but most of those are going to be used on the uh, life track. Um, 
So, as I understand, most the, the stuff, everything on the micro track, I think, is half inch play. And I guess the only yeah. precision part that has to be cut by hand would be like the sprocket. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we're going to need to cut out. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I thought the, the sprockets were bolt on. We actually welded them to the shaft so we can't really use them. So, we, I think we want to cut them out unless we just torch out the old sprockets, which. Uh, which is an option too, but I think it's easier to make new ones. Um, okay, the sprockets are all the same on yeah all the tractors. Yeah, so the old sprocket. I don't know if that, that that can't be removed. It sounds like to be used as a pattern. Even that. What you're saying? Well, look, no, the pattern is simple. We print it out on a sheet of paper. That, that's that's good. Uh, so we yeah, okay. so if we if you can generate that fab drawing, we can. Uh, just pull it off the uh, yeah, pull off that. We have that in uh, the DXF files, but it would be convenient to put it all in the same format. So, like the fab drawing format out of FreeCAD, so we can do annotations for the dimensions. Yeah, the critical thing about fab drawings is you've got how it looks, different viewpoints of it from different sides, and then critical dimensions. Like what's the what's the tip to tip distance on the on a sprocket? What's the outer diameter of the circle on a sprocket, or the you know things like that, or uh, the sprockets that we do, we're gonna weld like for the micro track. They're welded to that that three inch hub, so we're gonna have to have a three inch hole in the middle, for example. You know, so that's the logic there. Um, if we talk about the micro track, the sprocket there is. No, sorry, I, I'm, I take that back. The sprocket on the micro track is on a one and a quarter inch shaft. That's what the motor shaft there is. So it has to have a one and a quarter. Uh, a hole for the hub for the coupler, the one and a quarter coupler. Yeah. Um. Okay, I guess I haven't looked at the detailed parts that go around the sprocket, but I know there's got to be some kind of hub or parts on either side of the sprocket, which I guess is a a pipe. So yeah, that yeah. It's the a pipe. Idle, it's uh, a, the track it's actually a... rides on that on either side of the sprocket. I, so there's quite a bit of instruction on assembling that that has to be fairly precise. Yeah, but it's one of those things that, you know, we've got the motor here. It's like, yeah, it is. We, but that's why we need the fab drawings. The fab drawings are, okay, so the way it works is we have the fab drawings. And, you know, I have to explain what happens in a workshop anyway. So what we do is we explain it. We say, okay, you put it together such and such, and here's the dimensions. And then people figure it out. That's that's pretty much how it happens a lot in the absence of complete build instructions, which are step by step. One, do this. Two, do that. Um, yeah, we just don't have that level of detail at this point for the fab instructions. And uh, yeah, which is okay. Uh, because if we have the fab drawings, that's you can set people going on the different parts. Yeah, I know. Before it looked like there was still some of those compound parts in the master kenny with it that didn't have um, more detailed uh, components uploaded in files elsewhere, but I, I think that's kind of changed. I think but specifically what? A bunch more. No, I mean uh, nothing. I don't see anything missing on a. You can edit to break down for the drawings, right? Uh -huh. And that would include the idlers because some of those have to be made. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's uh, mm -hmm. those idler compounded. I don't know if I saw any. I mean, they're probably the same as whatever previous work was done. So, right. I guess first look for for any previous uh, yeah. instructions. Right. I mean, here, uh, let's see, Roberto. I think how many of these things are individual parts? That it should be just about everything here, because you know, for the sprocket assembly, we got that all cut it up properly um, uh, yeah we should have just about everything I think for the idlers would they they should be the pre compounded versions should be there um, no they no? are in the in previous versions of the micro track okay then maybe not um, so but can't no, we for example like yeah go ahead sorry go ahead yeah, I, I'm not sure even that that the, the idlers were separated. Oh, they weren't. 
into okay. components. I, I, I remember I, I saw um, sub, sub parts for the idlers, but I'm okay. not sure. All right. Well, okay. So if, for example, if we don't have the idlers, then we, the, the second substitute is we need to do what we have. Like, okay, for Thursday, you know, for Friday, there's not enough time here. So what, what we can do also is we take this, we do the ruler and we take measurements and then get a print out of that. You know, that's, that's like the worst case scenario. But now we can say, okay, that thing is exactly, you know, 11.7 inches around. So um, things like that. So if we don't have it, we got to just substitute and, and do whatever screenshots we can do to, to get out of them, to get, um, get the proper dimensions. We, we, we can, we can hit the idler and use the, to the, to the view tool in, yeah. in the draft workbench, I think. So we, uh -huh. we can, we can get a, a to the view from one of the of, of, from the right perspective and, mm -hmm. and then put the, that view into a drawing sheet yep um, so if we're in a draft so let's let's take a look at that so in draft workbench can you walk me through that so for example if you got this you know front face of the idler I'm in drawing dimensioning oh, sorry in draft so say I got that plate, what I do there? You got you, you have to go to the front view. Uh, okay. So I would go into ortho orthographics. So we got front view. Uh huh. And um, yeah, and the. Uh, the left side of your screen. Uh -huh. I think you have the shape to the view to uh, button. Uh, sorry, in the right side. <laughs> sorry, at, at the end of the right side. And then to the right side here. In the toolbar. Or you can go to the draft menu also. Uh huh. Draft menu, shape to the view. Okay, I clicked on that. And then let's see. Yeah. And then I got a shape two D view. Yep. Yeah. And then from there. Um. Well. Let's see. We can. Uh, I got this thing hiding this thing. Shape two D view. Now, yeah. How do we? What do we do with a shape two D two D view now? see. I, I saw um, an option in draft workbench to put that view into uh, a drawing sheet. Mm -hmm. but I, I don't remember it yeah. now. I, I oh, drawing. There's now. a drawing. Okay, I think I got a drawing. Yeah, so shape. So I got a drawing in there. How did I put this shape 2D view in there? Yeah. Yeah. Um... What I said, so let's, yeah, let's coordinate that. Um, some parts we can just get from drawing dimensioning. Others we're going to need to do shape 2D view. And the cheating way is just to take the dimension button and take screenshots. But what we want to do is the coordination is main key here. So please, uh, I would say let's generate, since this is our working document right now, uh, start pages right in this do working document so we can pull off all the material that we have uh, from this doc and we know where it's all at so um, let's see I, I I mean I'm gonna I can work on some of this here too I mean we can work some on some of it in the workshop itself but I would say to prioritize things um, Roberto if you just finish up the little details and then maybe start working on extracting the different uh, fab drawings uh, let's call the actual yeah. drawing slash fab drawings yeah coordination and put your name by what you're doing and then put a link to the page you're working on so that we know 
Like this would be our master index where people are pulling from and make sure there's no conflicts. Um, s small power cube frame I'm going to add there. Power, there's a power cube coupler. Uh, that, I mean, Roberto, you've done that coupler there. So that's that has to be fabricated from the two-inch pipe. Yeah. We can basically, as we walk through the machine, uh, we can add parts here. Uh, the tensioner can be broken down into pieces, of course. That would be a few pages. But yeah, so let's use this as an index. Keep adding to it. But as far as people available. So, Roberto, you you know what you got to do. Abe, I'd still like you to do to do the three items on a big tractor. Don't worry about these items here. Because uh, the big tractor... We need a little more work on that, definitely. To right now, we can't. We don't know how to fit the the Bobcat quick attach. The geometry is not correct there, and so um, do that. And then uh, Dixon. I mean, claim if you want to claim any of these parts, but just please uh, for the dimensional drawings. But just please write your name on to which you're doing, and let's work within this document. So st start new pages within this document where all the all the actual work is and who else uh, who else we got that's available Oliver defected to the D3D workbench that's good that's still a priority people yeah um, 3D printer is still big Josh we got you so Josh you can continue just just nail out the what you can do on a vibratory plow to f get in the correct detail but that also you're gonna need to generate the fab drawings out of that too so Please do that uh, for the actual. If you have the time, if you have the time to do it, otherwise we can do that here. We can do what what we can. Um, yeah. I think that's. I'll just keep going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, keep going. So, let's see. Is that sufficient coordination right now? What I'll what I'll be doing for the next couple of days is I'm going to be actually working on. Uh, I think the track actually, Abe, I'll coordinate with you. Like like you know whatever you just keep uh, you know keep your log well updated. What I'll do is I'll work on a tract the big tractor geometry as well. And the other part is of course getting the inventory of the Yeah, I gotta order some steel, so I have to do that. First thing I gotta order some steel. Second thing is get to the tractor. Um the big tractor. The small tractor we're really good on that. Um so that's that's good. And go from there. So, is that uh, any other questions for now? And let's look at any questions and comments. Well, I, I want to add uh, something, or yes, I, I want to say something. Um, nothing about the tractor. It's, it's yeah. just um, I, I suffered an next iteration um, because I was away a few weeks and. Um, yeah, I, I had some stuff to do, and now now I started that, and I wanted to to ask whether there are any new features or stuff that still should be added um, that's not in the um, Excel sheet, and uh, for the for yes another... for the ISO for the OSC Linux. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right now, FreeCAD's working. Um. KeyCAD appears to be working because I used KeyCAD in the last workshop on the ISO, so that's awesome. Um, I I think we're we're decent for now as far as where we're at. Are you helping out Michael on some of the back end work with Jitsi Meet? The the uh, like I said, I was unfortunately um, away the last oh, okay. three weeks, I think. Okay. So. Um, I, I wasn't I wasn't able to do anything, uh, but uh, the good news is that I've, I've moved now to full Linux. I actually use the OC Linux as a basis. Nice. So um, now I'm a bit better at uh, virtualizing and and doing my stuff here. It's it more efficient than it was before. Okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. Cut off. Yeah. Yep, okay. okay. Perfect. Um, what what I want to say, I, I'm back and I'm gonna do that. Um, however. Um, are there still problems with the Arduino and find a workaround? Because otherwise I'll have to try around it here. I, I sent you that they moved 
the ad user, but I'm not quite sure whether that worked. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes, that part. No, uh, yeah, yeah. What you want to do is, uh, I mean, first of all, is it working for you? And if it's working for you, then uh, we need to make sure that's replicable here. But right now, my, I cannot use the 3D printers because the Arduino, it can't, we st still cannot ar connect to the Arduino. And I haven't tried right. the add user thing. But that has to be, yeah, we need to make that so it's turnkey. So I don't know if you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. I'll, I'll, I'll add it um, mm -hmm. and try to, to implement that. However, I yeah. want to ask whether there are already workarounds so I don't no. have to experiment. No, I haven't okay. seen a workaround. All right. And you can test so, it because you've got you've got an Arduino that you can connect to. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cura was, was the same problem, I think. But, right. but it's actually the same symptom as far as I can see. It. Yes, yes. Um, so, so yes, Cura and Arduino environment are not usable on OSE Linux as they as it stands because it, uh, there's connection problems through USB. Well, well, you can write with it, but but you can't uh, write it onto the Arduino. You can just uh, modify your code and, and upload your G code and stuff like that. Um, Did you use? Uh, have you ever used OctoPrint or um, like? Uh, well, I've, I've written actually uh, a software for for managing, and that's using OctoPrint. So yeah, I've used it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, is that a workaround for now? Or are you just trying to fix? I mean, obviously that needs to be fixed. The USB. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. That that has to be fixed, and it's. Mm, I don't think it's a workaround. Uh, out of the simple reason, it's 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 a symptom that comes out of the fact that um, at least that's. I hope that that's it. Uh, that the user is not allowed to be um, more specific about uh, USB input. So you you can't use uh, USB devices in a more in a in a different way than its default to call it so. So you have to be uh, allowed to do that, and for that you have to be in a certain group, and that group has to be added to your user, and that will be. Added, I hope, in the RC local and something like that. I, I'll do something like that. Yeah. Uh, if anyone is following me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. 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 Make it. Yeah, we got to make I, it turnkey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Yeah. Perfect. It's gonna work perfectly. Yeah. 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 I, I'll. I'll do it. I hope so. Um, okay. I'll. I'll try it. All right. Um, so really, no, no features, no, no nothing. No, 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 so far we're perfect. No, that's good. That's good. Thank you. I, I think we're we're good Can for you now. Can change the default background on OSE Linux? Yeah, I, I I was able to do it right now. Um, I have no idea why it didn't work before, okay. and that looks far far better, of course. <laughs> yeah. Just the default Ubuntu one. Okay. Yeah. Now now it has the day one, day one uh, image you sent me, mouse. Okay. No, that sounds good. Thank you. Let's let's continue. Let's just wrap up here. There are a couple yeah. of questions on the on the relevant QA, immediately relevant for the workshop QA stuff. Quick attach plate. So Roberto's asking, can we reduce the length of the quick attach female plate, which means that thing that the implements attached to, uh, in order to fit the commercial QA male plates. The length of the commercial QA female plates is 45 inch, and instead of it of fit it to the bucket, we can fit it to the QA male plates. We reduce the length of the QA female in order to fit the commercial QA male plates. We can. Yeah. Yeah, we can. That that, that will solve the the problem that you see before. Because now the right. the female plate is is uh, is forty two inches, but when 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 you purchase the yeah. plate, it's going to be forty five. So right. instead of cutting to forty two, you can cut it more to fit to the to the male plate. Uh, you mean reduce the forty five to forty two, uh, just by by doing it physically? No. It, it is already reduced in the in the right. current design. Yes. So I, I mean to reduce it more in order to fit the metal plates, the commercial metal plates. Yes, yeah, certainly. So we, we, 
Okay. Yeah, we can do that. So that will solve that issue. Yeah, I mean, the idea is that here's the bottom line. It will work uh, for general, in general, it will work when the female part is larger than the male. It works. And we can, you know, sometimes leave it like that. For example, if we want to be ambitious and put a wide full size bucket on micro track, we can do that. I mean, the mount, as long as the pin on the bottom of the of the female is correct, the, the bucket will work, it will get locked in. Now, it will be much wider than the tractor, but that's fine. And, and we can work with it with basic things, like, for example, going forward and backwards is absolutely not a problem, but if you start moving side to side, the bucket will want to shift on you, but it still will be held by the bottom pins. And But the, on the other side, if the, the female part is smaller than your male part, then you're not going to be able to fit it onto your your male part. That's just the generalization. So, yeah. But what you asked a question that you asked, yes, we can reduce the the female part, cut it to size like we need it. And there's a case for not doing that, however, because if we want it to remain interoperable between live track and micro track, then the idea is you don't want to reduce things because then they wouldn't fit on live track full size. So it's, you know, you do it case by case, see what makes sense to do. Um, but the general idea being that the male part has to be narrower than the female part, otherwise it won't fit. The male part but can be larger and it will fit. Yep. The, the life, what, what is going to be the, the width of the of the loader arms in the left track? They're going to be the, the bobcat, the standard, which is going to be like the standard mount of the, um, like the plate that we got. As is, we should define the loader arm spacing to fit the plate that we got. Does that answer it? The, the okay. male, the, the female plate that we got. The female plates define the max width of the loader arms. Otherwise, you cannot attach to that female plate. And that's the consideration that for my, for the real big life track, the loader arms cannot be wider than that. Right now, in the current picture, current design, they are wider than that, so we need to uh, narrow them down. I've got 57 and a half, almost inches on the width of the, the full width of those arms on the life track. Exactly. In that kind of Right. So, yeah, we I, need to... I was thinking about and looking at that uh, yeah. quick attach system because I didn't really understand that, but I, I think I get it better now. You're purchasing the the mail plates, correct? The, uh, spring loaded actuation pins, and then you're designing the female plate that bolts on. No, we're and not. Actually, no, no. At... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me correct you on that. We're not for the big tractor. We're not designing the the female plate because we're going to use the maximum availability of the female plate that is standard so that part that's in the let's see is it the, the critical thing you have to look at is the bill of materials on the let me make sure that's in there because you'll need that but you look at any standard female attachment plate we have to make the loader arms fit to that Okay. Okay. So, so it's a standard bobcat. It's full yes. bobcat. Uh, yes. The full width. one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So let's look at. Yep. And yep. Let's see. The. Yeah. So and they they can be made compatible though. You were saying that you can switch between the uh, wider implements. Uh, on the smaller one or the bigger one, I guess. Okay. The yeah. The clarity there is, you can you can use the wider implements on a smaller tractor. That's fine, they will fit. However, you cannot use the smaller implements on a wider tractor because they're not gonna fit. The The arms are gonna be too wide. Does that make sense? So, what is the problem with with reducing the width of the female plate in the micro track then? Oh, uh, there is no problem you, with that. Well, the only problem the is that those you won't be able to use it on a big tractor. But I, I, I think that you, you just said that you are not going to use the 
the, the implements of the micro truck on the big tractor? Uh, well, we'd like to whenever possible. I mean, you want to you wanna leave as much resilience as possible. So, so if it makes sense to leave, to not trim down the, the implement, then it's good. Okay, but, but you have to take a look at specific examples. Like, for example, we don't want to go, like for the, the digging bucket on the micro track, we don't want to go more than 42 inches because the whole point is that we're supposed to get into tight spaces. Therefore, we're forced to make both parts within 42 inches. You see what I'm saying? Does that but make sense? Or how, is the logic that, lost but here? That, that will, will, will in, in order to do that, um, will work. And the, the loader arm separation of the life track should be 42 inches too. And, yeah. And I think that's right. not possible. Right, that, that's that's correct. I mean, yeah, we don't want to... I mean, for 42, I mean, in principle, you could. You could do that in principle. But, but if you look at the cab, you have to fit a person in there comfortably. So right now, what I drew there was something I thought would be that distance. And right now, we have 32 inches um, for a comfortable fit of the person. So you can still get the loader arms within 42 inches right you still could do it you have 10 inches left so the idea would be to straddle the arms as narrowly around the 32 inches that both the implements of the micro track and the uh, that the micro track implements all fit on a big tractor you know what i'm saying does that make sense yeah but that will will will, will limit the the use of the bigger implements like the those with Four or five inches female quick attack. Um. Or not. Well, no, you can still use them, but there'll be that space that you're grabbing. Basically, the male parts are going to be grabbing, and there's still space left on the outside of the the female parts, right? That's okay. Yeah. That that works, especially for things that are that really don't have any side to side loads that definitely works but you can do you know one way to get around like if you look what's possible you can do say the 42 inch spacing on a big tractor and have you know an 8 foot wide implement like a 96 inch implement but the mount both the male and female are only 42 that's perfectly acceptable you can do that as an option you see what I'm saying yes yeah so it's possible to have the narrow mount both on life track and micro track and that way all the implements are changeable between big tractor and little tractor and then still all the commercial products out there you can still attach them to both the big tractor and the little tractor and the only limitation is that for certain implements where you need that tight match between male and female because of lateral loads, meaning side to side, then we're not in a good position for that. But for those, you can modify those mounts if we want to use them on live track micro track simply by putting a stop there, just welding in a stop that locks in the 42 inches. See what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So we can modify, like, for any place where it's critical. And it's, I mean, I have used, for example, the bucket, loader buckets, without any side-to-side -side stabilization. And then I was just careful how I operated. I made sure that when I'm digging, I'm just moving forward, and I'm not trying to turn a circle while I'm digging. So it then, then gets into operator skill. So you can work with, with uh, like, even if you don't modify the wider implements to be held tightly, you can still work around it by how you actually work the implement. So that's, you know, there's different ways. And we're, of course, hacking it here. But for now, I would say let's, uh, I mean, the bottom line, I think, for now is let's try to get both, both the machines to be 42-inch on a spacing. And right now, with the cab 32-inch, we can do that. But that means we'd have to make sure that wherever the mount is, we have to 
mount it accordingly uh, to make it fit exactly. So, but that that's the work that's that Abe has been assigned, and I'll, I'll get to that what we can. We basically gotta simply narrow down the arms here and make it fit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I understand the full activation on the quick attach. I was looking at a lot of files yeah. on that. I see how it pins in at the bottom, but I, yeah. I didn't see a reason why it would be universally compatible between the narrow micro track and have different connection points, the wider and the narrow on the life track. So uh, I oh, yeah. figured I'd just design it with holes for, for, for both. Right, right. But right. see, that's the thing. The uh, I think about the holes for both. You see the way it is, right? Look at my well, screen. We're using the inner holes. There's two sets of holes. So the holes are actually designed to fit different widths. You see that? I also noticed there's lots of adapters, of course, between for you know commercially for sale uh, online for different implements and different uh, connections. So okay, okay, but let me uh, stop you there. Well, that that is for adapters that do not follow the Bobcat standard because this is what we have on the micro track here is the Bobcat standard right here. So that means you're taking other companies and you're trying to take make the Bobcat standard fit to those different standards we don't have to worry about that yeah so but there's two different widths of, of the bobcat standard is all, all we've got so yeah yeah it just needs to be compatible with both yeah. um yeah I'm trying to think what would need to be added uh to the wider track because the wimes are obviously the arms and if you had a narrower bucket on there you're not going to have a uh, a bunch of the control is what you're saying with a narrower implement it's just going to be locked on uh, and I guess you wouldn't have um, uh, you don't have hydraulic cylinders uh, for that actuation for the narrower implement obviously I'm not sure what your point is here well, we have okay uh, okay so it depends on how the play it attaches okay here the bucket is all one piece there but yeah uh, we have the the loader arms contain both the raising cylinder and the curl cylinder so this is this is the curl cylinder curl of the bucket or I'm, I'm calling it the curl cylinder there um, but yeah, you ha we have the, those we got that cylinder. yeah we have two sets of cylinders one cylinder here for raising and one for curling and on the life track, the, some of that needs to be added yet, I guess. Oh, yeah. On a, okay, so if you go to the the life track, uh, I drew the raising cylinder only. The second cylinder has to be added. And we can add it, um, you know, we can add it at the front. One, one convenient place to add it is right at the front. Like, so it's not underneath like we have it right now. It's going to be at the front. So, yeah, um, I would say figure, so the order of steps here is get the width correct such that the mounting shaft and this vertical support shaft, this vertical piece here, that that is working together, you know, we're, we're just working out the basic geometry. Now, as far as the the geometry the precise geometry of the loader arms that's a secondary step to getting the traction down and the cab in place and everything potentially fitting so you don't have to work out the detail of the arm geometry and we probably want to save that for later what we do want is step number one is to get the correct spacing and then get as far as far as you can on the actual loader arm geometry. Here I drew a geometry that's like, you know, approximately good. It's, you know, I haven't tested it for how high it really goes. I can tell that it does go, just by my experience with it, it will be acceptable because of this three foot long cylinder, which extends really far. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, just get as far as we can. I, I mean, just step one is get the width of the loader arm to be correct around the cab. Uh, the main proof of concept we're after here is 
Can we scale the power to four power cubes? That's number one. Number two is making a functional machine with the proper geometry on the loader arm so it's really convenient. Uh, what I did get for this, this uh, the parts I have is I got two joystick valves which actuate both the wheel drive and the, and the cylinders. So the main proof of concept that we're after here is work out the actual traction, the scaling of the power cubes. That's the big deal. Uh, we're building the power cube that's going to have the four outlets instead the well the suction it has four suctions the the main power cube and then the other ones are just the small ones but that's the main proof of concept can we actually scale that very easily because it's kind of tricky how all the hydraulic interconnections work we've got a bunch of experience with that in terms of doing two power cubes and now by the learnings from that we think we can go to four and still make it very simple so main proof of concept is a uh, is pretty much the power the the scaling of the power and the larger tracks and the traction system because we've never built uh, this kind of a three this longer track device so that's a that's a good proof of concept the, the loader arm I wouldn't be too worried about if we don't get to those in the workshop um, but I do care about just getting the traction part correct um, and right now as you see the frame is I think there's you know this piece is kinda hanging in midair there we need to put another tube there I thought that tube was there but I'm not seeing what else is there so just the basically the framework and the loader arm spacing around the cab is what's important most important Um, the raising mechanism looks good. I mean, we're going to do exactly what it is here. That's the old style of mounting. Um, the detail on the... Yeah, you don't really have to worry about it, but the detail on the mounting to the, the side plate has not been updated here. Roberto has that for the micro track in the older version, so we can borrow that from the older version of micro track. Um, so we can add, for example, to the, uh, the actual fab drawings. So there's the tensioner, the current micro track. And then there's tensioner. It's a few versions back on micro track. Roberto did that. That's the one with the, for 50, the 56. What is that? The, no, sorry, the 45 cubic inch motor. The current micro track is for the, I think it's, what is it, 15.9 cubic inch motor, the small one? Yep. So that's that's that. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything yeah, else? I just wanted to say that yesterday I, I uh, updated many files in the. Um, in the master spreadsheet, uh -huh. and so uh, you can look for the files there. Okay. Yeah, that's right. We have a master file spreadsheet on the tractor construction set 2017 page, so we can look there for what's what's there. So the coordination is. Um, let's put um, work. I mean, just like normal work with the MasterCAD spreadsheet, work with the master, what do we call it, MasterCAD spreadsheet? Oh, MasterCAD checklist. Checklist. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, so that's uh, that's um, you know that's that's about it. The interesting part is uh, for our system with at Open Source Ecology, we're going to try to, as always, we you, we make the life harder for us because we're always saying, what's the whole systems ecology? Like, how do things one thing fit on another thing? So that's why it's harder. And as we're doing this, we're trying to make 
make it as universal as possible so things fit on both devices and that's that's kind of the problem statement we're dealing with right now uh, so it's it's a little harder but it's definitely worthwhile to, to make it make it work for both so that um, your you always have backup and resiliency and redundancy that's a good design principle so with that said I think that's all we could do right now so altogether we're looking for a very nice event we're you know we're definitely building upon the former work with the tracks the tracks work power cubes work I mean things are working so uh, right now it's def really delivering on the scalability of the multiple power cubes and and I really like that it's because you can really get very low cost efficient systems doing that you can run on like a single unit when you don't have to do hard work you can run all the power units when you have really hard work to do with a tractor so it's it's just flexibility that's that's pretty good um, yeah so I think we can quit right there unless there's any questions so let's coordinate let's use the the spreadsheet the this uh, this allocation slide number three the dimensional drawings to coordinate and then Abe, if you can just tackle the geometry of the big tractor, and then Roberto, you got some of the finishing finishing detail on the micro track. Dixon, if you can gen put your name to any of these these fab drawings, and we got work on the on a vibratory plow, which uh, we're we're paying attention to the vibratory plow. It's a nice example of a simple implement. And second is we want to use that. So if there's a real dog fooding case, we have to bury a thousand feet of electrical wire, which is basically uh, like a backup power system for the off-grid seed eco home. So that's that's what we're doing with that. Uh, and the bucket itself, I mean, we're we're going to be testing that here um, in Katarina around the seed eco home, just various different things. So so I'd like to see uh, further development of all kinds of implements. I really want to get that baler developed for the hay work and pelletizing work so the baler is going to be one of the projects we want to take on as soon as we can i don't know when we can do that but some of this haying haying infrastructure uh, and i think at this point the the goal is that the micro track and life track are fully ready to do site preparation work for any other future house builds that we do in the previous builds we just haven't used our tractors for the site preparation work um, so this is a time to step up the game to be dog fooding more of our products here all right uh, anything else to wrap up here um, I still have a question I have yeah. while I tested um, the links that you have put to the uh, towards the icons on uh -huh. the OS yeah. workbench page and um, it seems uh, I can't like I cannot access uh, oh, you Google. Can. Uh, can you check that oh, thank you yeah, let me uh, ch check those permissions there. Yeah, so I'm going to check those permissions right now. So anyway, 8 p.m. tonight, we are meeting on the, the GPS tractor. So anyone who wants to join that. Otherwise, yeah, we can wrap up here if there's no more questions. I'm going to change those permissions right now. So thanks, everybody. And I'm going to quit recording and change those permissions there. And next meeting uh, Tuesday, next week, same time.